This is Conversations with Mike Sparks. Are you concerned with the state of America, your state, your community? Then you're in the right place. State Representative Mike Sparks. He and guest are here to talk about local politics, history, faith, and freedom. Right, Julissa Rutherford Magazine show. Uh, we changed the name to Conversations with Mike Sparks. A lot of folks have been asking me about that, but a lot of our conversations are a little bit bigger, a little bit larger than Rutherford County. Um, got a big show tonight. In fact, I got so many guests that Jackson's been getting on to me. We don't have but a few mics. So uh, in the foyer, I've got uh, Mark Brassfield, the owner of the Safe House, and Christopher Alford, owner of the Southern Bunker in Smyrna. We're going to talk a little bit about Second Amendment uh, as well as the First Amendment. It's first for a reason. And I'm um, going to talk about a big event that they've got uh, coming up. And I'm hoping that Mark and Chris are back there talking about maybe joining forces for um, Chris's event at Sam Davis' home. And that, that event at Sam Davis' home is called the bunker bash uh sam davis home 1399 sam davis road in smyrna august the 24th from 10 to 5 and uh, you're gonna hear more from um christopher here in a few he's a gunsmith and recently started his store and sadly was recently broke into you know we're seeing a rash of that and sadly some of this is gangs what i'm hearing and um uh from venezuela and some other areas believe it or not that's what that's what i'm hearing you know i'm just saying what i'm hearing but um in the studio i've got keith bratcher retired firefighter road board member as well as paul johnson retired thp colonel now serves on the been on the county commission since i was probably two and uh <laughs> and he's on the road board too guys how y'all doing we're doing fine thank doing you fine. so much for so the with, opportunity when's the last time you've been on on up here at wgns 2006 when I ran for sheriff. Are you serious? 2006. I'm, seri I'm serious as a heart attack. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. That's shameful. Shame on you, Bart. You hadn't had <laughs> Paul well, up they, here. They've had a whole lot more important people than me. No, nah, well, I appreciate your humbleness, no. Um, but, uh, well, before we get started, we're going to talk about a little bit about road. I think we've got uh, Greg, I think Greg uh, Brooks going to call in. and um, But tell us about your days, Paul, at, at THP. Okay, uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, I made up my mind when I was a sophomore in high school that I wanted to be a Tennessee Highway Patrolman. Yeah. It took me four years and three months to get on, okay? And I was one of the happiest little fellows you have ever seen. How in old were you? I was 24. Really? When I finally got on. And uh, uh, the first day of my work, uh, October 1, 1962, I said, Lord, I will be so happy if I can just make it to retirement as a trooper. I'll be one of the wow. happiest little pigs in the pen. Yeah. Had no idea that 22 and a half years later, I would be the colonel of the Highway Patrol. Wow. In charge of a 26 to $28 million budget and 600 personnel statewide. What did you enjoy most about that? I enjoyed the responsibility Right Writing tickets, writing tickets. Well, uh, in a way, <laughs> the, the deserving ones, yes. <laughs> I'm kidding you. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was it was it was a good career, and yeah. uh, the good Lord's blessed me beyond imagination. Yeah. How many years you been on county commission? Uh, I'm on my 19th year. I've been elected five times, so yeah. If, uh, in 26, it'll be 20 years. So the people sent you back how many times? Uh, this I've been elected five times. Five times. times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you enjoy most about the county commission? Being able to address the situations that are really helpful to people yeah. and keeping it within a uh, balance of the budget and so forth. Yeah. So uh, I just, you know, I come from a really humble background, uh, Mike. Yeah, where'd you grew up in East Tennessee, didn't you? Uh, over in Dunlap. Oh, and that's right. If, if the listeners will just bear with me just a minute. Yeah. Uh, talking about my humble background, yeah. uh, my dad was a coal miner in Kentucky and uh, we lived in a house that belonged to the coal company he got paid off in the script 
That was his credit card really? for the store, for his electricity, rent, groceries, and everything else. I was the ninth of nine children, uh, seven boys and two girls, and uh, wow. seven of us survived. I had a, a brother that was stillborn, and then a brother that was 16 months old when he passed away. Oh. But the four brothers uh, and the two sisters, okay, with the four brothers and me, I was the baby, of course, uh, with their military records and so forth and so on. Uh, of course, I was the last one. And this is a funny little story. Uh, I was born at home, uh, and a coal company doctor delivered me. Okay, my full name is Paul Brooks Johnson. I tell everybody, I said, my family was so poor at that time with nine ch children, you know. Yeah. I said, they named me after the doctor that delivered me. They couldn't even afford a name. Really? <laughs> but wow. no, I, I have really been yeah. fortunate. But uh, back to the military, uh, my four brothers and I uh, have got a combined total of 52 years military service. Really? What yeah. branch you? I was in the Army. Army. I was a yeah. doughboy. Yeah, yeah. My my sister, uh, just talked to her last night. We were we'll talking a little bit about, well, she was talking to my wife a little bit about what happened yesterday with, with – Donald Trump, you know, and I probably can't, I couldn't share what she shared, but she was up for Soldier of the Year, I think, in 86. Sadly, she just went through breast cancer, but they've they've called her back up to train air traffic controllers, and I uh, thought that was interesting, mm -hmm. and um, she, I asked her how long she was going to be in Oklahoma, and she said, I'm not sure, you know, how long they, they how, she's however long the military needs me, I'm going to, I'm going to be here, but you know, you and I served for eight years, we, we always got along good, I, sure I never did. remember an argument. No, hey, and I enjoyed it, and uh, uh, I, I can't say that about Gary Farley, though. <laughs> 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 yeah. You ever had any arguments with Gary Farley? Yeah, but but uh, I'm glad. We you, had a lot of arguments, I'm Gary. I'm glad. If Gary's you, listening, I'm we glad love you Gary. I'm where you are now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Gary, you know, we did that, and, and Keith helped me. We did that proclamation, surprise Gary, and Jim Tracy helped me. And, and uh, what's the name? Cunningham? Yeah, Pettis Ken, Reed, Ken Honeycutt. Pettis, Honeycutt. Uh, Kent, the farm marshal, yeah, and uh, it was really man. That guy's really got a story to tell, man. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I like to share the story that his son is it Ben? Ben Honeycutt. And I always go to the the, the firefighters uh, reception at usually Men's Auditorium, and and they've got Uncle Bud's catfish. And it, it, you know, when you feed people, they'll usually show up. And it's one of the few receptions I even go to. And I'll go, and I always want to hear what the firefighters got to say. And I'm always asking about trauma, you know, among firefighters and trauma among. Mm -hmm. police officers you know concern me and several others and i asked this young guy i said man wh what do you do to just decompress after a shift you know man i was so touched you know what that guy said don't don't say what he said keith you know what this guy said what he, how he decompresses he said sometimes i call my mom i was like oh my gosh you know my mom's been dead a year and a half and i thought wow uh, this tough firefighter man i gotta call my mom you know because this is serious yeah. So, I mean, just coming back, Keith's told me some stories which we wouldn't probably share on the air, but it's coming back. I was asking about road projects and looked up at 840, and I see some tracos up. I see a lot of T dot equipment. And, uh, and I remember what you told me about that guy that, that, you know, jumped off the bridge and killed himself. And oh, yeah. Did, he didn't measure the rope properly. He was supposed right. to hang himself and put a rope around his neck and hit, hit the asphalt. But um, think of the trauma that you guys have seen, and you as a trooper. Oddly enough, two weeks ago, our show was uh, a retired. Well, no, he's still he's still the chaplain with uh, sheriff's department back in um, oh, forgot what county that is, um, East Tennessee County, and uh, Representative Lowell Russell, uh, who serves with me, was in a terrible car wreck, oh, absolutely, almost yeah. dead. And Lowell couldn't call in because he had he had some uh, dental work done. He wanted to call in, but he's got a book out. They've co-authored called Trial by Fire, and all they've seen on the roads. I think he said he's had to contact. Man, if it wasn't two hundred families, it was a hundred families that they've lost loved ones. Oh, yeah. Man, I couldn't imagine dealing with with that. Um, but on the road projects, I know I was telling Keith to, to remind me about Week Lane. I appreciate the widen that y'all done on week lane uh you know there's a terrible car wreck with them young boys and one of them was killed um the it was a horrific wreck i don't want to say what all happened to them but um uh but those boys i think they barred somebody's car or something and that real terrible curve right there was before living springs baptist church um y'all widened it 
you know, y'all widen it a little right. more. Yep. Uh, and uh, it yeah. really looks good. Yeah, widen you know? the weekly lane. Then, you know, we also uh, went in, uh, you know, the state and stuff. We redid the bridge down there yeah. at Fate Sanders. So that, that's that really need to be done so that yeah, we used to jump that off that all that's been improved right you ever jumped that. off that bridge uh, no <laughs> <laughs> we used to jump off when i was a kid looking back i'm like man i can't believe we've done crazy stupid stuff like that you know mm -hmm. i guess you get a little wiser when you get a little little older <laughs> um what do you like most about the what do you like least about the county commission don't name any names oh okay <laughs> uh sometimes uh it's frustrating that don't talk about the state of tennessee no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm <tasty. laughs> Sometimes it's frustrating that, uh, and I'm not going to call any names, yeah. but they seem to not be able to grasp the whole picture. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I got I got to say this before we get any further. Yeah. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with Keith and uh, Victor, David Victor and Bular, okay, and with our combined years of service, and right now, uh, year-wise, I'm the senior member of the road board, but you're talking about 80 years of experience wow. on the road board with us four members. Wow. But, uh, no, uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit uh, frustrating, but uh, I tell this story, uh, and I'm not – my father-in-law was a Baptist preacher, and uh, he had this little funny saying, says, he who tooteth not his own horn – it shall go untooted, yeah. and, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but when uh, last year in the heavy, heavy, heavy tax increase, the vote was 13 yes and 8 no. And everybody that's familiar with this uh, Western movie, uh, The Magnificent Seven, oh. I refer to me and the other seven, the eight that voted no for the tax increase, I refer to us as the magnificent eight that voted no on the tax oh, increase. Okay. Well, we've been through some of those rocky times when I was on public. So, oh, get, get, Gary and I were kidding here recently. You know, we did the proclamation live on the radio. But Gary's helped me on several issues helping oh, yeah. the community back home and um, have a lot of respect for, for Gary, as well as Jim, Jim Trace. Well, all the Farleys. Larry's done oh, a great yeah, job. And, yeah. um, and Alan, you know, Alan's got, boy, he's going to have a difficult job next few weeks. Mm, you know, being the election um, director, you know. But, uh, Keith, what about you? You've been on the road board how many years? 22. 22. Yep. Well, you, and you're on the beer board. I am. I've been on there 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> yep. Well, you helped me. Uh, I think Paul knew that. You helped me go after some dope dealers. Absolutely. You, you want to talk about that? Yeah, we can. Yeah, back, uh, you know, when I very first got on uh, the beer board, I guess, I, you know, then I had a younger son, and I think uh, – worried about that and i think uh some of the community and was and uh got with uh you know uh truman jones was shared back then and we had i think we had some issues in the county then about beer being sold to miners from uh, markets and stuff yeah. and then so anyway uh he created like a uh a little task force and they were going in doing uh beer stings at these markets on you know periodically and stuff so then uh as a beer board you know we had uh served with a lot of different people over the years uh some of them are still uh jerry sartain's one of them's been there a long time yeah. and uh anyway um uh, so you know we just uh really wanted to uh tighten down on uh beer, beer being sold to miners and then um anyway they still do that and i know uh came to part of a lot of uh market started Doing some of the synthetic, synthetic drugs, weed, and, yeah, synthetic and, drugs, and all that K2, stuff. And uh, that stuff. I remember you bringing that to my attention, yeah. and we uh, we you know, started doing some stings. Oh, and we knocked stuff. the H E double L out of those guys. Yeah, and then we brought them before us, and uh, you know, we 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 doled out who, the. Substantial. Who was that guy? Because you started pulling all their licenses. Yeah, absolutely. Who was that one guy? I think he's passed. The guy said, "I so confused." And he was remember that guy. I can't I can't do his accent, but what, remember what he? Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, and, and his name escapes me right now. But uh, not the drug, not the dope dealer. Yeah, the, the, the guy on the road board. Yeah, he since passed. Uh, Mike Avery. Yeah, and, uh, and he, you remember what he said. Yeah, well, remember I remember he laid out a twenty dollar bill, ten and five, and he asked him if he could identify what those bills were, and the guy said, "So he told him you have, you don't have no problem with identifying the yeah, money. You don't have a problem with the money, but you can sell all this dope to these kids, can't you?" <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I, I, we, I wish, I wish I could have maybe thanked him a little more. Mike Avery was that his name. Mike Avery, yes. Where was he from? Here, Murfreesboro. He was. Yeah, yeah. he was. Uh, he had like a 
a electrician company for all those years. Yeah, right? yeah. He was on that. Always meant a lot because that's how you hit him. Is is you hit him in that wallet, man? Oh yeah. Oh, we yeah. got that one. That one guy. In fact, his wife didn't like me calling him out on radio, so I won't say his name. But um, <laughs> he knew what he was doing, and um, and it's sad that that people turn a blind eye. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I approached the guy and I called law on him, and I, I'm just be honest. The, the cop didn't know what I was talking about. I said, man, this, talk to this guy about synthetic drugs. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you don't know what synthetic drugs are? He said, no. <laughs> I remember the sergeant called me. He's like, hey, man, can, you know, we're, we're training these guys. Like, let them know. I was like, yeah. Poison Control Center calls it increased 1,300%. Yeah, well, you know what? Story. I, 1,300% yeah, when I, on because of that epidemic that was going on with the K2. Yeah, and, and I really, when I when you talked to me about it, I wasn't uh, real informed on synthetic drugs, but started to deal with them, you know, when I was, uh, from the fire department standpoint, we yeah. started making some calls and uh, some young people and seeing how they were disoriented and stuff kind of find out you know uh, they were on a lot of the you know personal. my mother was the first one to tell me about this she heard yeah. about it in florida and they'd been down there visiting florida she was to, and she was taught what they used to call it um bath salts yeah and molly's plant food yeah. and it was there's several different oh things. man there oh, had yeah. people that you know some are probably permanently damaged but we had market owners right here what y'all did the i think it was a uh, law enforcement tv i called it operations um snuff I think that that's correct. Was? I think that's correct. <laughs> you know, but the Lord, the Lord handled that that deal. I remember calling the, uh, remember calling, the detective, and um, he says, "Let me have a guy call you." And it was Attorney General. He said, "Man, just he said, if you need to hold tight, we've already got that guy. I'm not supposed to tell you, but we've done an undercover investigation. We picked your county, out of 95. You hold tight. We got him." They uh -huh. would call me back because see, my one of my family members got involved in this stuff, man. Right. When you feel pain, it's a great motivator. Uh -huh. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back most people know that their insurance can provide them with coverage for the many life's mishaps but i can help you also unlock discounts save money and get benefits with farmers insurance policy perks whether we're discussing home or auto insurance i am here to help you understand these great perks call me mark lewis at 615-625-7070 for a quote and you can get a whole lot of something with farmers policy perks we are farmers bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state only available at select farmers branded policies underwritten by farmers truck or fire insurance exchanges or affiliates Dr. Automotive Auto Repair and Maintenance Mechanic Shop Garage provides car owners in Smyrna, Murfreesboro, Laverne, and the Middle Tennessee area with excellent auto repair services. Deep rooted experience in serving both foreign and domestic automobiles allows for proper diagnosis in a timely manner. Check them out online at autorepairsmyrna.com, call them at 615 220 0971, or stop on in at 1205 Hazelwood Drive in Smyrna. Hello and buenos dias. I'm Lisette Lopez, your bilingual real estate agent at Keller Williams Murfreesboro. I specialize in helping you make informed decisions that align with your goals. I'm offering free classes from how to fix your credit to investing to create generational wealth. Start your real estate journey with Lisette Lopez today. Call me at 954-552-4932. The number again is 954-552-4932 or browse my website at lopezcellstn.kw.com. Thank you. My wife and I enjoy going by Yard Sale Inc. We usually go to both locations, the one in Smyrna as well as the one in Murfreesboro. A lot of times on Saturday mornings we stop by and their inventory changes weekly so you never know what you're going to see and it's mostly open box. The name fits it. It's exactly that. It's a yard sale. If you don't totally agree with the price, the staff is always friendly and nice and willing to work with you. That's the Yard Sale store in Smyrna at 111 Enon Springs Road West in Murfreesboro at 204 South Front Street and online at bestdealintown.com. AFFI is Middle Tennessee's premier choice for pest, wildlife, and moisture control. They specialize in those difficult and unique cases. You can reach them by phone at 615-300-2395. That's 615-300-2395. Or stop in at 200 Glen Rose Lane in Smyrna.
A hey, Middle Tennessee, it's Mark from the Safe House, and now the security riddle of the day. What's less secure than a fake safe from a big box or furniture store? Joe Biden's fake border policy, of course. But hey, there is good news. This time next year, Joe Biden will not be president. So drop by the Safe House and check out the largest selection of safes in the Southeast. Build a wall around your valuables with a safe from the Safe House. We have certified delivery crews to deliver and install your safe. Don't let a crackhead or illegal deliver your safe. With over 30 years in the safe business, the Safe House is the place to buy a safe in Tennessee. So go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com. All right, we're back. Conversation with Mike Sparks. We've got Paul Johnson studio and Keith uh, Bratcher. I was just asking Jackson if he could play some, some uh, Motley Crue or something, ACDC, but we're not allowed to play it anymore. Uh, they'll, they'll kick the video off is what they say. But, um, uh, but that last commercial, that's Mark Safe. Mark from the Safe House, Brassfield's going to come on here in a few I've asked Mark if he can kind of kind of make a really sweet commercial and kind of tone it down a little bit. So I'm <laughs> wondering what that would sound like. But um, I think we've got a caller. Uh, caller, go ahead. Hey, caller. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? Hey, how you doing? Doing well. This is Greg Brooks. I uh, just wanted to call in and say hi to all three of you. Say that, you know, I, I really appreciate the, uh, all your service. Mike, I know you've been you've been a public servant your whole life, and I've, nobody can dispute the fact that and Keith Brasher and Paul Johnson have also. So I think I that's, uh, that. there's a lot to be said for that. Well, I was thanking you for widening a week lane. You know, you knew about the young boys that the one that was killed and the others that were uh, didn't really get hurt, but you had a heart for that. And um, and I know these road projects do do uh, uh, take take a while to get done and um this growth i know y'all have got a lot of challenges out there trying to keep up with all the folks that want to move here well there's no question about that the uh you know the the traffic volume is something that we we will always be behind on unfortunately uh, our road system just hasn't kept up with the growth yes i mean you know that growth is just outpacing all the infrastructure that in the county but so, you know, there's, it just depends on how you look at that, whether that's good or bad. You know, it's, it's good to have growth, but at the same time, it needs to be sustainable growth. Yes. And I think, you know, uh, just so everyone knows, uh, the road board, which obviously Keith and Paul are both on the board, but the road board is there. There's It's a seven-member board, and they're there to approve the spending of the highway department. So what that means is they approve the annual operating budget, and then during the year, which they, they meet monthly, but during the year, they also will approve uh, award, like they will award bids. We might bid a state aid project or we might bid a uh, uh, something from a vendor like rock or asphalt or yeah. metal pipe or something like that. So those bids are something that, that they, they approve too. They award those bids. And they also, you know, always there to pass along the you know, the comments and the concerns of their constituents in their respective zones. So they, they're a vital road to, to the highway department. There's no doubt about it. Yes. Well, I appreciate y'all's efforts. I know uh, I was asking Keith if you could come in. I'm going to have, uh, I guess, uh, Paul and Keith on next week. And I was hoping maybe you can come in the studio if you could or maybe call in. And I think next week we're going to do a whole hour of nothing but road mm -hmm. projects and some of the great things that that's happening in, in, in Rutherford, in Rutherford County, you know, Jefferson Pike's finally being widened. And, um, you know, I've, I've talked to folks, you know, and you've talked to folks who've lost loved ones and, uh, you know, it really, uh, it saddens you, but by the same token, it makes you want to improve that dangerous intersection or fight for that red light or fight for that road project being, being, uh, uh, widened. And, uh, as a County commissioner, I remember we had that fatality over there in the, What's that little, little community? The one that the little girl got run over. Um, oh, going towards Woodbury, back in there. You're talking about Braver Road. Yeah, yeah. back in. I remember when that that <coughs> happened, and, yeah. and Robert P. and some of y'all right. fought right. tirelessly to get that approved. Um, if you can, I know you may not be able to make it to the studio, Greg, but you're welcome to to come in next week if you can. I'll, I'll certainly keep that open, and I'll try to do just that. Okay. You know, you mentioned something about uh, Jefferson Pike and. And I think that's one thing that I have come to realize since I've been in office. I've been in office now almost 12 years. 
but that's when I was out campaigning the first time, people just do not understand. Most people do not understand what the county highway department's responsibilities are. Yeah. And that is, you know, to maintain the county road system. So if it's a state route or if it is, uh, you know, a municipal, uh, municipality, like a city, then we, we don't, that's not our responsibility. That, that yeah. would be the state or the other governing body. We have, I think Paul can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, it's roughly 976 miles of county roads. And I don't have a road book in front of me, but roughly 300 of those miles are subdivision roads and the remaining 600 and change are rural county roads. Yeah. So that, that's what we're responsible for. And we try not to only to be a, a maintenance department or program we we try to be an improvement program too when we can and that's okay. goes back to what you were talking about on putting uh, additional uh, shoulders on weekly lane we've done that on literally on miles and miles of our county roads and i think that that's one of the things that's one of the most important things i think we can do is get a little bit of extra room for correction if you pass that yeah. white line you know get distracted yes. or just for whatever reason you know you Avoiding lane departures on these rural roads it is that's how we save lives. Yes, Go ahead, Paul. I, okay, uh, since I got uh, Greg on the phone here, I think he knows how much I respect him and everything, you know. But uh, I have uh, the number of miles is 983.647. That's on, and I try to remember that wow. because Down when you fraction. when you multiply that uh, when you're uh, resurfacing that's two lanes so that look how many miles and wow. i will say this i've had the privilege of serving with uh greg for 12 years yeah he's a businessman and he he is fantastic yeah. he, he knows uh i'm by him like a fellow was by me one time he said well he said you know if you told me that uh, a rooster could pull a train he said I just look for them hitching it up. So yeah. that's the way it is with Greg. Yeah. If he tells you that, Greg, you can take it to the bank. Greg, I, and I don't take this wrong way. I know you're a very mild-mannered person. Absolutely. You're, Greg's very <laughs> low-key, but I do appreciate you always being attentive to to listen to my concerns and others' concerns when, when folks call. And I'm not just saying that to make you look good. I'm, I'm being honest. I, you know, I won't say any names of any other people, but I can remember Florence Road on Nashville Highway. My wife was in a terrible car wreck right there, and um, and she still has trauma. The car it was about almost flipped over, and that was before all the improvements that that y'all have made over the years. So, uh, anybody that's went through Florence and Orleans for Highway knows how terrible that that whole area was. And I, but I appreciate y'all and your your efforts. You know, um, uh, Greg, I'm gonna give you oddly, give you last words. Go oddly, ahead. Oddly, oddly enough, Mike, we are that we are currently working on Old Nashville Highway. I spent two days at the end of last week in. In that intersection of Florence Road and Old Nashville Highway, the con it's a state aid project, so we bid that out, and the contractor that was awarded the project started that uh, Wednesday of last week. So that <laughs> that's probably an area you want to avoid for the next. Yeah, few days. exactly. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be some long delays. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Track I've yeah. got one other thing. Yeah, you talk about conservative. The budget for this year. For the highway department, it's 15% less than what it was last year. So now you talk about being a yeah. businessman and taking care of business. You got it. Yeah. Well, yeah. that that area, you know, Greg, I, do you remember me calling you all about December? I tore up my car uh, right there at Chicken Pike where that road <laughs> got cut down. It wasn't y'all's fault. It was the developer's fault. But anyway, my own pal, I've got $2,400 worth of damage. Yeah. And if I can still drive it, but the, even the trooper, when I pull in the Capitol to make fun of my car, I'm going to find a used bumper that's the same color, <laughs> and I'm going to swap it out. I'm not turning my insurance, but, um, yeah. but I, I'm not I'm even going to bother the guy with it. But a little widow, and she called me complaining about the road when I pulled up, when I left out, boom, tore up <laughs> front of my car. So you got to be real careful. <laughs> well, Greg, if you can, plan on calling in next, next week, okay? I will. All right. I will. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling, brother. Thank you, and, and thank you, Paul and Keith, for uh, being in my corner. Hey, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just Go say ahead, one guys. thing real quick, Mike. Uh, I know Greg's already got off the 
phone. I hope he's still listening. But anyway, I'll kind of second what uh, Paul said, you know, uh, served with uh, Mike was the other superintendent when I first got on road board, but been serving with uh, Greg the last 12 years. And yeah, he's all business. You know, he uh, yeah. he really knows uh, roads and stuff. I think he is that all he's into roads. He's got any well, hobbies well, or well, anything? Well, not. I'm sure he does. <laughs> but I mean, uh, he you know he had a, I think a paving business and stuff yeah. like that you know, uh, personally before yeah. he became. Uh, he's the, got the experience. I know yeah, that. and uh, uh, and I, you know yeah. you know every time I'm always on here, I always uh, you know I get people say, "Hey Keith, I appreciate you paving the road in our area or whatever." But I wish I could take that credit. But I'm like Paul I can't you know because I always tell people it's the men. At yeah, that highway course. department and women uh i don't want to leave them yep. out we have an office there they all do a great job and i brag on them all the time about yeah. uh, how efficient they are and kind of second what paul said uh we just did our budget uh i think we were two million dollars he said 15 percent. but i think the exact number is about two million less time. this year than it was last wow. year so we we, okay. we uh you know we take care of business we uh we're real frugal and we yeah, well, I appreciate it. We're going to have you all up next week for a okay. whole show, talk about road board and other things that y'all have got going on. And who's the guy that you've invited that you really, y'all been talking real highly of? Uh, Michael Anderson. Yeah, and there's another guy you talked real highly of. that Keith make Elrod. Him, yeah. They yeah, both and, serve on the road And board. Michael uh, Anderson, what's his nickname? The, well, his middle name is Vular. That's what we call it, Michael Vular. Anderson. <laughs> that's his real name? Yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. That's and, he, and he is the he's the first African American to be elected road board in Rough County history. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, looking forward if he can if he can make it. Well, thank you so much, guys. Well, thank you. Um, Absolutely, Jackson. If we can take a little quick two minute break, we we'll transition with Mark Brassfield and Christopher uh, Alford. Be right back, folks. Most people know that their insurance can provide them with coverage for the many life's mishaps. But I can help you also unlock discounts, save money, and get benefits with farmers' insurance policy perks. Whether we're discussing home or auto insurance, I am here to help you understand these great perks. Call me, Mark Lewis, at 615-625-7070 for a quote, and you can get a whole lot of something with farmers' policy perks. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not available in every state. Only available select farmers' branded policies underwritten by Farmers Truck or Fire Insurance Exchanges or affiliates. Dr. Automotive Auto Repair and Maintenance Mechanic Shop Garage provides car owners in Smyrna, Murfreesboro, Laverne, and the Middle Tennessee area with excellent auto repair services. Deep rooted experience in serving both foreign and domestic automobiles allows for proper diagnosis in a timely manner. Check them out online at autorepairsmyrna.com, call them at 615-220-0971, or stop on in at 1205 Hazelwood Drive in Smyrna. AFFI is Middle Tennessee's premier choice for pest, wildlife, and moisture control. They specialize in those difficult and unique cases. You can reach them by phone at 615-300-2395. That's 615-300-2395. Or stop in at 200 Glen Rose Lane in Smyrna. When I say VFW, you probably have some visions of a smoke-filled bar with a bunch of old-timers eyeballing you. Well, the Stones River VFW is doing things different. No smoke-filled rooms, no turning prospective members away, and a strong emphasis on camaraderie and community. We believe in instilling our American values in our young people through numerous programs such as Voice of Democracy, Patriot's Pen, Scout of the Year, and VFW Teacher of the Year. The Stones River Post intends on becoming a driving force to help, aid, and assist wartime veterans. So if you're one of those veterans with a campaign medal and you want that sense of purpose that you've been missing, then give our recruiter, Andrew Farr, a call at 615-490-5715. Hey, Middle Tennessee, it's Mark from the Safe House, and now the security riddle of the day. What's less secure than a fake safe from a big box or furniture store? Joe Biden's fake border policy, of course. But hey, there is good news. This time next year, Joe Biden will not be president. So drop by the Safe House and check out the largest selection of safes in the Southeast. Build a wall around your valuables with a safe from the Safe House. We have certified delivery crews to deliver and install your safe. Don't let a crackhead or illegal deliver your safe. With over 30 years in the safe business, the Safe House is the place to buy a safe in Tennessee. So go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com. All right, we're back. Conversation with Mike Sparks. I've got Mark Brassfield on the Safe House and Christopher Alford, owner of the Southern Bunker. How y'all doing? Wonderful. Doing good. That commercial's hard hitting, ain't it? <laughs> the you, truth. You get any, you get any complaints? How many calls you get a Not week? Not from people who buy safe. I mean. <laughs> and I think uh, Chris here has bought 
a couple safes. Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the ones we use at the uh, the shop are all That's came cool. from all came from from the safe. So y'all had already met prior to this show. Well, I've actually done dealings with um, yeah some of my some of uh, the others the crew that were really? there. Yeah. But so he don't directly. come on site. He don't come on site and help deliver. Uh, so the first first safe we got, we chose to deliver ourselves because I had access to some good equipment that I, uh, to do yeah. it ourselves. But the second time, I was actually away from the shop when they delivered. My wife dealt with all that. So. Yeah, how sales? Everything good? Uh, yes, but they're down. Down. Just like a lot of businesses. Well, yeah. You know. But yeah, yeah we're, we're we're doing fine. Yeah. Bidenomics. Yeah, it's working so well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sales <laughs> up up five say five years ago they're up from five years ago. As far as you compare, yeah, because I'm I'm well, yeah I'm larger a larger company now. Yeah. You but own, I mean, what, if three? status quo, yes, three stores. But no, I mean that the business is not what it was. Yeah. I mean it's definitely down, and mm -hmm. I mean. A lot of other business owners know whether it's guns or safes or whatever they're down too so i mean this yeah. economy is not doing real well exactly you know i was talking to somebody at rotary today i think it was it was our president judy king who gave a great speech the other day at rotary uh she's just started her, her presidency um she mentioned i think bobby hopkins our former president um mm -hmm. he he i think he bought i think he had some gun safes just for his cell phones do you see many people that'll just lock up they're not even locking up guns or locking up business equipment. Well, anything that's valuable. I mean, yeah. safes are good for anything from pictures to yeah. money to guns to whatever's valuable or sentimental to you to protect. Yeah. Important documents, that sort of thing. Well, you, uh, right. he just got, you had a bad situation, what, last month? Uh, yeah, back in May. Yeah. They um, had a smash and grab, uh, which unfortunately has been going around in the middle of Tennessee area. Um, but, um, but thankfully, the security we had and everything is could have been a lot worse. But uh, there were some other shops that it was worse for. Um, yeah. So we were blessed to to not have it be as bad as it could have been. I guess. Yeah, you and I just met. Uh, Roger Thomas had had um, entered. He'd been talking about you, talking really highly mm -hmm. of it because your background. You were a gun a gunsmith by trade. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm a gunsmith by how'd trade. How did you get involved in that? Um, just passionate about guns, and yeah. I love uh, love knowing how things work. Yeah. So. Um, just uh, and I just like to do things with my hands. Um, musician in my childhood, and just dad who's a contractor and does construction and. So you play cabinets. music as well? Yeah. Oh, what do you play? Uh, so pretty much anything with strings or that's percussion based, I can at least really? pick at a little bit. I'm Good not for you. by any means a a master, but he's a he's a drummer. <laughs> Well, I ain't a master either, Mike. Yeah. Well, it's not, you're not a musician, but you're a drummer. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I am, I'm a musician per se, but yeah, yeah. I'm multi, you know, instrumental, that sort of thing. What's you, Mark? I can fly planes inverted. If oh, you that's want right. To. You're yeah. a former pilot. <laughs> well, former. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's like riding a bicycle. I can still do it. How but, did, yeah. uh, uh, did you see a close call of the day between them? At, I forgot what airport that was. And mm, place, that I was, mean, that almost. Was, that wasn't a close call. It wasn't a close call? Okay. It, it shouldn't have happened, but yeah. no, it was. It looked worse on the film than it was. Yeah. You ever seen a plane sit still in the air because the wind? Like a helicopter? No, an airplane. I remember. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, my sister. Well, they're not really told sitting still. Yeah, in the it's wind. Just, It's ground speed. Well, the wind was so strong, where the plane's like just barely moving. It was a little sad. But he's still moving through the air, which sets its ground speed. Because if I yeah. if I'm flying 50 miles an hour and the wind is 50 miles an hour, I'm going zero over the ground, but I'm still going 50 miles through the air. That's interesting. Yeah, we can do another show on that if you okay. want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That you're getting into a really uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, we could talk about this all day. You know, do you miss? Let's it? talk about gun shops we and will. guns and <laughs> safes um, and stuff. You want to do that? Well, how did you segue into the into the gun? I mean, the safe yeah. business. From it the was Empire. from aviation. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Yeah, I was working for. I'll make this really quick. Yeah. I was working for American Eagle here in town. I was making a whopping fourteen hundred dollars a month, flying, when what I year? first started. Nineteen. It, that was in the uh, uh, in the late 80s yeah and then uh we we're pilot negotiations blah 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 we're gonna go on strike i thought i was gonna be out of a job went to a gun sh uh, uh show some, yeah show and a guy was selling safes told him hey i'm looking for something to do he goes hey won't you sell gun safes and two weeks later i was selling gun safes 31 years later here i am so wow been that long 31 years Man. 31 years four months now four days and you know i've been at your office hours. a few few times and you sell not just i mean you sell 
boat gun safes you sell uh the the secured doors what do you call those yeah, vault doors vault doors storm and security doors storm shelters we do storms above ground storm shelters yep do any kind of safe and we were discussing yeah. this earlier a safe is a safe it doesn't matter what you put in it it could be a gun safe jewelry safe money safe you know any what's safe your favorite what can you say what's your favorite brand, brand? yeah brand. Favorite brand. Mm-hmm. well my favorite brand that my customers pick the most over browning yeah. Um, but uh, Fort Knox makes an excellent safe. Liberty, they make a good safe. Um, yeah, I, I carry 10 different brands. But yeah. yeah, branding by far, I sell the most of, and that's not because I necessarily push them. It's what my customers choose, Yeah, which well, is important. Christopher, would you would you buy a film, maybe asking, when you purchase them from Mark? Browning. Browning? Browning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. Pro Steel makes Browning. Which, so. which I've got other brand safes, and but yeah. they just, uh, to me, it came down to pack the capacity i needed the quality i needed price point kind of a mix of all of them yeah so i'm not loyal to any specific brand of safe as long as it's proven to be good quality yeah the uh the break-in um i don't know you know i know you really bragged on smyrna law enforcement oh yeah you know oh yeah they uh we couldn't ask for a better response from them as far as um from the time they were notified uh to the time they showed up on scene um I'd heard about some of the other shops before and after that took definitely substantially longer, but you're talking, um, my wife and I live very close in, in general to where it is. So we, they had already gotten there by the time we got there. Um, and, um, he said, it's just, they, if it had been, if they had been in our shop, even just a few seconds longer, they wouldn't have been able to get away Really, because, uh, Smyrna PD was on top of it yeah that's good that's good to know i mean if you ever i mean where you're at i would think mark you'd have a break in or two on fourth avenue south correct have you ever well, had any trouble? i mean look i mean not luckily i mean my stores are very secure and breaking into a safe shop would be yeah, pretty I'm, stupid anyway exactly but um no but i mean fourth avenue has really improved through the years it used to be really bad but now it's yeah. you know it's pretty good but you still you know lock your stuff up but yeah. mm-hmm. one thing i wanted to mention we were talking about this uh, about who's breaking in and stuff yeah i've had a rash of folks coming in finding game cameras and stuff in their yards so these criminals are putting these game cameras cell cameras in the people's yards and watching their activities and then they would really when, and they're seeing when they're not at home and then they're breaking into their house when they're not there mm. wow. so and that hasn't been reported at all on, in the media and it's because of this what, border policy well, that's going on. I, I was going to say, um, th- wasn't you told Chris for this? This was some gangs from Venezuela. Yeah, yeah that so were they actually uh, one of the other um, shops um, that ended up getting break, broke into. They they apprehended some of the suspects, and they were actually underage um, illegals from uh, I believe it was Argentina, Argentina, or, yeah. South America. Yeah, from okay. South America. So that in and that's the. And that's been happening just not just with gunshots with other businesses as well it's just south american gangs getting through um into our country unfortunately and and yeah. and unfortunately they're using they're using minors in a lot of it because of just the uh i guess the, what what they perceive as the consequence for the minors is going to be totally different than it would be for adults so yeah. they're like oh yeah we'll use you for that kind of kind of stuff and and you won't see the same kind of consequences we would as from you know those who are an adults. adults. Yeah, it's just sad where you think the mm-hmm. see the country uh, changing. Now let's talk about your event, Sam Davis Home. Why, why did you choose yeah. Sam Davis Home? Just curious. Uh, so really, we um, had just we were trying to look for something that was going to be big enough to kind of sustain our event, and uh, the uh, Smyrna uh, Independent Merchants Association, SIMA, yeah. um, had told us to reach out to Sam Davis Home, see if they'd be interested. Um, and uh, so I went, talked with, I believe her name's Jenny, um, who who runs the place. Yeah. Just had a good conversation with her, told her what we were doing. Uh, she told us about what the Sam Davis Home was and, and kind of how what their mission was. And it just it felt like a good fit, yeah. you know, uh, one local business to another local, local place. And so, if folks wanted to, to put a booth up or set up. You're okay with that? I mean, oh yeah, we're that? we're still looking for. We've had a ton, especially in the last probably two weeks, uh, a ton of people reaching out to us, uh, looking to be vendors. 
Uh, but we're still looking for vendors, still looking for sponsors. Yeah. Um, cause it's going to be a big day, just fun family, uh, kid, kid activities, a lot of giveaways, food, music. We're yeah. going to have some safety speakers out there, not just gun related, but, uh, fire related. Um, we're going to have law enforcement there. We're going to have the national guard there. Uh, just different people talking about different levels of safety and just keeping the community safe. Have you, uh, y'all talk about getting the pickers some of the guys to come out um I believe it was it Derek Rayburn Paul Lamb and some other guys that play over at Sam Davis home has he said anything to you about that Mm-mm. they play uh maybe if Roger's listening he can text me I think it's I don't know if it's every other Tuesday or every the Wednesday or um but it might be something to do you know they yeah. may they may be they come out we had an event over there in January a big chili cook-off and um a history series of Smyrna and Old Jefferson they come out and play yeah. that that morning we had a prayer breakfast that did you make it, Mark? I think mm-hmm. I, I didn't get there. I think I invited you. Um, yeah. But um, great, great event. You know, just a lot of history there. And I think they just won some award by TripAdvisor or something like that, you know. Um, yeah. But a lot of, lot of history uh, out there at that old home. Um, are you going to set up booth, Mark? Yeah, we got to talk about it. Yeah. Good, good. How do you, I mean, do you move a safe? Do you bring a safe to a? events like well you got that giant <laughs> safe to, well the big red safe yeah yeah big red safe.com where did uh where'd that come from uh actually champion safe company makes them it used really? to be the big yellow safe and we turned it into the big red safe so now, do you keep that on site at your at my shop yeah okay you don't worry you about it have a yeah i, I didn't he, he, he just says i worry about it i didn't realize that was a real safe <laughs> how would you like that call on a police radio scanner hey, you never safe. know you never know that about would be people. terrific i know you, but you there. never know about people today some of these criminals and yeah and all uh, it would be it would be funny yeah. how how large a safe is that one six by ten so ten, the, is that the largest safe in tennessee yeah, actually it is. I thought it you actually is. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank on, you for mentioning that. On your commercial, I was kidding you earlier. If you're going to be able to behave and not get too fired up about what happened yesterday. Well, the truth. I mean, yeah. I, well, my my spots are the truth. I don't, yeah. you know. And then the the analogy I use: the older I get, the less I can remember. So if I tell a lie, then I have to remember what I lied to you about. So I just I'm just going to tell you the truth. Well, you so. get fired mm-hmm. up, passion. I was kidding you about. Well, yeah. How do we make a really sweet? gun safe commercial sweet like really calm mellow i had a guy ask me to do like a really kind of calm it would be it commercial mean, about the storm irony shelters. would be would be funny you and know? i was like yeah the irony of it yeah ironic. people hear you on on this station or the other station you right in nashville that's kind of funny and all of a sudden it was like the the milder tamer calmer the milder tamer mark, mark. wow I'll, i would have to like who's your contact or dan mandis who, who's the contact with that other station for the other station with the commercials uh well i have a rep her name's laura oh well, okay really. you dealt with dan oh well i, I mean i know all those guys good, yeah. good people they are good yeah. Nine, nine, seven, it's fine. Yeah. They, they really are yeah. you know they are um the, but yeah uh, i mean i started out with the obama safe special was the beginning of my was he the edgy best commercial seller for you actually joe biden has been he was actually joe biden was my employee of the year for 2021 really <laughs> yep Yep, we did a big, I mean, you know, big special it's, about I mean, you're, him. And you're everything. kidding, but you're being, but really, no, that's I'm really serious. Being, being serious. And I, as much as I like Donald Trump, I called it the Trump slump. But oh. um, my my uh, shelter and um, gun safe sales and all that were good. They were, were very good, but they were kind of flat. And then Biden got elected, and it was like you know Elon Musk shooting a rocket. Yeah, you yeah. like Elon? A very. I really like a visionary it. oh man I, yeah. he, that dude oh, yeah. is just that dude is just a trooper um real quick be, before we take the caller you know uh often one, one thing i want to do about this show is i kind of want to tie it into faith and you know sometimes oh, yeah. we don't we don't uh, get to those things but you know you i contacted you what was it three mm-hmm. years ago i heard your commercials yeah and i called you and i said I, I was asked to carry the gun safe bill remember what you told me about it oh, yeah. yeah remember what you said i'm sure you'll remind me <laughs> you said Y'all have done a crappy job of trying to present that bill. You remember? remember what well, you it said? wasn't you. Well, it wasn't me. It either. wasn't you, and I won't mention who didn't do a good job. Yeah. But I, I did learn the term bill jacking. Remember the bill jacking? Oh, yeah. Guy? Somebody tried to. That was be so sarcastic. funny. Yeah. So I know what bill jacking is. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's just. It, well, it's like uh, I told that guy, I said, well, you, you, you never could pass it. We're fixing to pass it, that's though. It. And we that's passed it. it. I mean, but, and I, I elevate you to the level 
of uh, other, above other people because you're the one that helped get it passed. Well, so, you know, I'm gonna yeah. tell you what got it passed. You and I prayed over that bill, didn't yeah, we? You remember we that? And I asked yeah. you, you a believer? Yeah. And I well, do that. Of course, lot. I'm a believer. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if you're a believer or not. You know, and you well, said, yeah. yeah, and we prayed over that bill. And but in all fairness, um, Bob Freeman, Democrat, helped us, yeah. and so oh, did uh, Chris yeah. Todd help us. Because when Bob spoke up on the bill, I was like, oh man, he's gonna say something about your commercials. He's gonna take issue, and Bob. Bob bought a gun safe from you. Yeah. So uh, it was a bipartisan uh, bill, but I'm gonna tell you, it was a power of prayer. Uh, no, I'm a big, that, yeah. that that got that that got that done. Uh, we got a caller. Caller, go ahead. Hey, Mike. It's hey. Marty, I just listened to the show. Hey, Marty, have you got to meet Chris or Mark yet? Not in person. Just just over the radio and my buddy Marty and Luffman. Oh yeah, Marty. Me. Yeah. yeah. I well, want to meet Marty. Marty, I need yeah, to come we'll meet you too one day. Yeah. Well, you were once you, you were going to come to Alice Rowley's event that yeah, had over. Yeah. There. I'll follow you on Facebook, Marty. Okay. What is that that thing you do? The insignificant something you know when yeah, you post. Insignificant worthless historical history. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I, I wait for that every time you post that to, to, <laughs> well, to go look at. I appreciate it. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Reason I call it that. I've been. I've had people you know comment why you do that. Why? Because it's not. I said, when's the last time you talked about it? You know, when's yeah. there ever come up in conversation? Right. Right. And that's the reason it's insignificant. Nobody ever talks about it. So it's an act. I just use it for that. But I really appreciate you following me i do oh yeah yeah it, I, like i do look forward to it to, to read what insignificant thing you're going to post i mean yeah <laughs> well Ma, hey marty while we got you on air tell tell uh these folks up here what you used to do on horseback and and some of your exploits uh whether it's in middle tennessee or or out west oh, okay yeah i was a, a competition shooter i did rodeos and and uh, we would go out into an arena with ten targets and two pistols, and we'd try to go out as fast as we could and shoot everything and come out as fast as we could. And um, I'm really proud. I, I rode a Tennessee walking horse against all those big quarter horses out west. And we, my horse, his name is Doc Holliday. He and I were three times world national champions. And you still have that horse today, don't you? I do. Now, what was that nickname uh, somebody gave you that time? Remember I seen that video? Remember that? Oh, you're talking about when I fell off? Yeah, what was that nickname that guy gave you? <laughs> uh, he's a, we don't need Don't no, use no profanity him. now. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, um, no, he, what that, he I don't off think Marty or, wants to answer that one. <laughs> he don't. Yeah. I just, but you know, you, you did a quick, look a jiu-jitsu roll man it was pretty cool got back up on your feet it was it was really pretty cool uh, post that video on facebook marty if you, if you can find okay. it they call that the tuck and roll the tuck and roll there you it's go. where you drop your shoulder mm -hmm. no that was just, that huh? was cool i liked it so you drop you when you go off the horse you drop your shoulder and ball up and you keep rolling until gravity stops you what'd you do with the gun though what do you, I do with what? With the gun, with the pistol, do you tuck it uh, under your arm and roll with that, or did you? What yeah. you do? Yeah, I tucked it. That's huh? pretty cool. I want yeah. to see the video of that. that. <laughs> yeah, share that video, Marty. Don't be embarrassed. Maybe that'll be your next next insignificant video you could post. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, pretty cool. They they made fun of me. They mocked me and laughed at me and all this other stuff. <laughs> well, uh, I always kind of talk about faith. You know, uh, I've often shared this on the air. You know, when I first met Marty, he was big, big shot around town. And I went in to get some car insurance in my Hot Rod 68 Camaro and 12 bolt. He kicked me out of his office. Again? He goes, what's he doing here? And his assistant goes, he'd like to get some car insurance. He goes, we ain't insuring him. Like, he was crazy. I said, he said, we ain't insuring And, man, I'm going to tell you that, that I'm not going to use the bad language on the radio, but, man, it, it made me mad for years. And I said, one day I'm going to get that guy back. And he'd come by my car business, and I was like, yep, this is the time to get him back. I was going to tell him, don't let that door hit you in the buttocks on Where the way the out. Good Lord split you. Yeah, and I'll, my dad would have done that, but my mom would have prayed for him. So I just, I, I, I was like, what would Jesus do? And I end up selling him a car, or bought a truck from him, or something, you know. But, anyways, that that is forgiveness is Actually, real. Actually, ended up selling me four cars. Was it four? 
Yep. That's right. Um, but for, seriously, forgiveness is a powerful tool. I mean, you know, we don't think about it. We think forgiveness is being weak, but forgiveness really is a is a strength. And, and some of well, y'all's personalities will be story. hard. I enjoy you telling it. Well, it's true. I mean, you know, if we harbor all this bitterness, man. It only affects you. I, it really is, yeah. you know. Um, it, right. it really does. Marty, how you doing? You know, you had the car wreck, and it set you back. You've been unable to walk for, what, three? is it three years now? Three and a half years I've been crippled. Well, I don't would call it crippled. I just say it's a, it's a setback. I mean, we've been praying for you. I prayed with you a little, <laughs> little while ago uh, when I was yeah, over. Yeah, you did. You come over and brought me a delicious meal and prayed over me. That was really Well, nice. that was my mother-in-law, Brennan Smith, not, not me. I can't. Well, my my wife reminded me to tell you that was her lasagna, by the way. It's well, funny, my wife was needed credit, not her, not her mom. <laughs> you saying? You saw what I did to that plate, didn't you? Oh, you knocked it out. It it was uh -huh. it was gone. You, you still know. shoot off your porch? I've seen some things of you shooting off your porch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I enjoy being out there. It's nice. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing I got to give you credit for, Marty. You you've had such a good attitude. Even though you've been, you know, you've had this setback. I mean, you know, we all going through something, and you're you really. I've, I've had a lot of people say that you've been an inspiration for them, because you've done a lot of things to help the least of these. In fact, uh, I hope you don't get mad at me sharing this, but he mentioned he bought a car for me. He said he needed a car for for a little girl, and little girl, her her parents couldn't even speak English. They were from uh, Egypt, and little girl was sixteen, and he goes, "There's your birthday present." And it, it was very touching because I didn't even know I didn't even know who it was, and um, she goes what? And um, she looked like Cher at sixteen. Remember Sonny and Cher, you know, long hair. And um, he goes, "There's your birthday present from the porch." And she goes, "What?" And she was confused. He goes, "That car, I'm. That's your birthday present, man." She broke down, and started crying. Oh my gosh! I thought I was gonna get choked up. And I told Marty, I said, "Man, that's your best moment, dude, of your life." Marty, remember what you said? Uh huh. You, you want to say what you said? He goes. Yeah, I paid too much for the car. No, that you didn't there. say that wasn't it. That was fifteen hundred dollars <laughs> on the book, by the way. Uh, it was a nice car. Man, it had the chrome wheels, tinted windows, had everything, nice. heated seats, leather. But um, no, I said, man, that's your best day. That was your best day in the eyes of the Lord, right there, because yeah, you did it for it somebody that could not do anything for you. And precious, yeah. and her little sister. Um, I think they had a cousin that was kidnapped in Egypt and freed and. Um, yeah. But anyways, um, uh, Marty, I'm gonna give you uh, a couple more, couple more uh, minutes to share some things you've got going on. Go ahead. Well, I don't have a whole lot going on except I've got um, Jennifer Allen still as my physical therapist. Yep. And boy, she comes over here. She sets the bar so high; it's unbelievable. But anyhow, I'm complying with everything she wants me to do. And right now, at this point in time in my life, I'm walking almost 50 feet. Yes. And I can Amen. I can drive my golf cart. Yes. I don't want to get in a car just yet. I got a driver that helps me with that. But but yeah, I'm 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 able. I'm going to be uh, walking and driving here. Yes. Shortly. It won't Amen. be much longer. Amen. Well, th thank you, Marty. Marty, I'll catch up with you. All right, you All right. guys. Good talking to y'all. We, we need to take, meet one day. We'll take care, it. Marty. Uh, Thank you. Y'all, we, you know, we talked about the, the Trump shooting yesterday. Give us the last two minutes we got here. What's y'all's thoughts? Wow. I mean, That's, if you want yeah. to share it, your thoughts on, I mean. I mean, I. You may want to keep I thought yourself. that something like, like that was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, that's, Scary. you know, as much, you know, vitriol and whatever when you, when you big got, word you want to use. When you about, got half the country is on a daily basis demonizing someone, you know, comparing them to Hitler for four yeah. years of their own yeah. presidency and then constantly throughout the next presidency. I mean, it's bound to yeah. escalate to something like that. Yeah. And I, I think that that may have solidified his presidency. You know, I've been I to, mean, I've been to yeah. four Trump events. Trump was 50 feet from me on on two occasions. CIA got onto or Secret Service got onto us. So we, st we stood up on the chairs. Yeah. I mean, because but so did everybody else at yeah. C CPAC. And I mean, they yelled at us, get down, get down. But they were rough. And even with the governor, I see when, in his inauguration, I see snipers, I see, I see drones, and I, that's one of the that's one of the main places they're going to look is rooftops. So it just seems. It, I mean, some heads are going to roll this it'd week. It'll be interesting to see what the breakdown was. I know that's the counter sniper. 
There yeah. was no breakdown on him. I think yeah. you count about five seconds, and he mm-hmm. took him out. So, but yeah. you see that interview with a couple young guys, or they're warning, they're saying, mm-hmm. "Hey, there's yeah. a guy with a gun." Yeah, and they said the law enforcement man, I, was running around like a chicken with their head cut I off. I talked to an undercover agent earlier that I know, and he said, "Man, that's just something's wrong there. Something is wrong." But well, and you talk about sleep. God and the Lord and all that kind of stuff. He didn't want him to die. I mean, he he even turned. If you're you not see where he turned his head yes. that last second. Yes. Now you can call that luck or whatever, but there's something better going well, on. I like probability statistics. The yeah. the the odds of him surviving mm-hmm. that yeah. is so miraculous. What, and half an inch further yes. and boom, he'd be dead. We gotta no. remember there's a God in heaven and these are spiritual oh, yeah. battles. Thank you, Chris for all for Mark Bradfield. Enjoyed being here. All right, we'll see y'all next week. Pre-recorded. The Good Neighbor Network.